Hi Booktube! Lynette here and today's video I'm going to talk to you about the books that I finished in September. Now September feels like a very long month so I apologise if I'm a bit vague on the details of some of these books um, because while it's been a very long book, um, a book that I finished very early on in the month has stuck in my head and is taking up all the memory space that I have uh, for the details of books. However, I had a very good reading month. I set myself um, this TBR, nine books, um, and I read nine books. Now, I didn't read all of these nine books. One of them was substituted out, but I did get through nine books, which I'm really pleased with um, because I thought that, you know, maybe one or two of these books would probably just drop off. Um, I might not get to them. Uh, one of them did, but it, like I say, it got replaced by something else. Um, and yeah, I just think that I had a really fantastic reading month. I read 3,085 pages. None of them were audiobooks. Six of them were um, physical books. Only two have had to go back to the library. Um, I am banned from my library at the moment from borrowing books. Um, I need them to get over the fact that those two books were very, very late uh, <clears throat> before they'll let me have books again. Um, and three of them were ebooks. Uh, they were they fell into the genres of romance, non-fiction, and fantasy. And my average rating was three point eight nine. So let's talk about the actual books. The first book was um, in an attempt to continue a series, and this book is Hard to Score by Kay Bromberg. Uh, this is the third book in her Play Hard series set around four women who work for a sports management agency in America and how they go and um, fall in love with sports stars while they're in the process of their day-to-day -day business. They are not falling in love, not all of them are falling in love with the sports star that they're representing. Um, it is uh, a side, you know, that, that character is a side character. Uh, so it's not, you know, there's not really any nepotism there. Um, but they're, they're good, they're straightforward books. There's a little, there might be a little bit of history between the couple they might have met previously. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're just fun books to read. I, I don't think I've come across a bad book by Christy at all. Uh, I love everything she writes. They are a little bit on the spicy side. Um, she has become tamer in her um, physical love and how much of it is in her books um, since I started reading her. Uh, there isn't quite so much of it as there were in her original series that I wrote, um, which, you know, I'm not bothered by. Um, it's quite nice sometimes to less is more. Um, and she does put the effort into writing that. Uh, so if you enjoy romance, um, want something a little bit dirtier than what you're used to, a little bit steamy, a little bit spicier, I would definitely go with Christie's most recent books, um, have a go because they are enjoyable and it doesn't take away from the stories. The second book that I finished of the month was um, the book that has taken up all my room in my brain for memories of the books I've been reading. And it, I, I think I can quite categorically say I don't, I don't think I need to fill in. I've got, I've got a, a book battle thing going on in my reading journal. I don't think I need to fill in the rest of the year because I think this book is going to be best book of the year. Um, and it's non-fiction, which is not normal for me. I don't read a lot of non-fiction. I prefer memoirs. And um, from reading this book, I've realised that uh, the types of memoirs that I like they're not whole life memoirs. I prefer um, elements of their life to be focused on. So, um, and this is the only second book of that ilk that I've read. Um, that book is The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting by Ivana Lynch. Um, if you're any type of fan of Harry Potter and the films, you probably know that Ivana Lynch played Luna Lovegood in the films. Uh, Ivana, um, she developed anorexia um, in her early years and this is her story of how she 
developed the anorexia and then how she recovered from it. Um, but also it dispels the myth because if you see any writings about her, oh yes, Harry Potter, Harry Potter saved her life. No, Harry Potter didn't save her life. Harry Potter was a part of her recovery. Um, but also I feel that Harry Potter was not the most positive part of her recovery either through reading this book. Um, I have said before on this channel that I have issues with eating um, and mine developed in my mid to late teens and developed out of a need to control food, something. My life felt very out of control and I had a need to control something and that became food and I stopped eating. Thankfully, um, quite early into the process uh, of that, um, we realised, my mum and I realised I, I, that I had a very good uh, relationship with my mum um, and could talk to her and can talk to her about anything. Um, and we talked about, you know, we, we didn't argue. Um, yes, obviously my mum was trying to encourage and conjole and negotiate to get me eating again. Um, but my mum very much didn't make it is a big issue not eating is a big issue but she didn't make it feel like this massive issue um, and I think that helped to get me on a recovery path quicker before it could develop into anything more um, I th this 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 book has made me cry has made me laugh has made me rage um, I can very much, the, in the early years when she's developing the thoughts that lead into her becoming anorexic, can very much feel the parallels, can see how um, in my life we managed to stop those thoughts from spiralling. Probably because I was able to be honest with my mum about those thoughts and what they were. Um, so they didn't spiral from a, just a control, a need to control something into a need to control. Then, you know, I didn't see the impact it had on my body. Um, so it didn't become a body issue that I was then further controlling. And I can see that. And I can see how um, in her recovery towards the end of the book, um, she talks about how the thoughts have been... The, the, the needs for control um, and to control what she's thinking um, how that uh, has been moved onto other things and, and in another way um, which means that she needs to keep her body in a better condition um, so although she's still in a way controlling what she's eating she's controlling it for healthier reasons um, and she has a healthier relationship with food. Still not healthy with thoughts of control. Um, you know, the, the, it's not something that goes away. Um, but this book, I, I gave it five stars. I mean, I, I don't know how you can um, rate nonfiction, um, but I, I couldn't give it anything else. I just, I, as soon as I'd finished reading it, I wanted to reread it again. I'm not one who tabs books. I'm not one who annotates. Um, occasionally, if I'm reading on my Kindle, I might highlight a passage on my Kindle. But I find it takes me out. I wanted to reread this book and I wanted to tab up all the thoughts, all the thinking, all the feelings. And yeah, I think I am going to reread it again at some point. Um, because I just connected so far and this is easily my best book of the year. Um, it was also the August pick for the Cozy Book Club. Um, we all had mixed feelings um, and I just want to say that I know that some of you watch um, and I just want to say because I, I was quite open um, in that discussion about my own struggles and I just want to say thank you to you all for being a safe space where I could do that. Um, because I, I think that helped in my evaluation. I hadn't finished the book when we did it, so I didn't know what stage of recovery she was at at that point. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, 
I'm really grateful to the ladies for that and I'm, I'm actually really grateful that we actually picked this book as well um, like I say easily best book of this year so I clearly decided looking back over my reading to make uh, September the month that I continued with the series or caught some up the next book that I finished is uh, Blood and Honour by Jane of Vixen. This is um, a romance novel set in the world of motorcycle gangs. Um, and this is just the final book in the series, wrapping up some storylines from the first three books. And it was okay, wasn't a great book. Um, I'm not sure that I would read anything more by her. I did see a little bit of progression in the writing over the course of this series. Um, I can't remember what the series title is. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they're not the best romances. They were fun while I was in them, but they were a little bit repetitive in the end. And, and inside the books, not just over the, the, the series, they were a little bit repetitive. Um, they just, you know, they, they fleshed out five minutes and... I'm not going to reread, um, but yeah, um, they were okay, and I'll just leave it at that. But it does mean, because it was the final book in the series, it does mean that I have ticked another series off of my list of ones that are ongoing. So, yay for me! Before I talk about the next book, I just want to say I in no way agree with the author's views. Um, I feel that everybody should, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinions. Um, but everybody is also free to live how they want to live. Um, <clears throat> so the next book is probably, if I refer back to the video last week, um, was probably the precursor to me wanting to read some books that I'd already started because it did give me a sense of satisfaction to knock this one off of the current new reading list because it's been on there since the end of last year. Um, and that book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I was about halfway through this book um, and normally the Harry Potter books I can run through quite quickly. We all know what these books are about by now. They have been everywhere for the last 20 plus years. <coughs> um, I mean, I enjoy these books. I'm not going to say I don't enjoy the books. I do enjoy the books. Um, and this was no exception. Um, and I whipped through it very quickly. And I was very pleased at the end to get yet another book off of my currently reading TBR to try and knock that down. The next book is where I deviated from the TBR that I had set myself and I had, cannot remember there was a reason why I picked this book up but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. Um, oh well I read it. It is another series continuation and it is Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. Ooh, it's a bit shiny on there. Um, Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. It is book two in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I read, I listened to book one years ago, absolute years ago, um, because I listened to it when I was walking to work. Um, but this is carrying on the love story between uh, Karu and I've forgotten his name, begins with an A, Akiva. Akiva. Karu and Akiva. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, it is continuing their story and the war between angels and the Chimera. Um, and they both had to take sides in this one. And at some point in the story, they've had to then confront each other's side and try and work out what each other is doing um, by the end of it. I thoroughly enjoyed being back in this world, um, even though it's been at least four years since I listened to the first book, I quite enjoyed being back here with it and I'm looking forward at some point to picking up the final book in the series, I own all three, um, and carrying on with it. I just can't remember why I picked it up, it was for a reason. Um, these are, I just, I really enjoy Lainey Taylor's writing. I don't think these are as beautiful and lyrical as her um, series, Strange the Dreamer series. Um, but I do still enjoy the writing and like I say, look forward to finishing this one and seeing, I don't know if she's got anything else out. I'll have to investigate. Um, but she's definitely an author that I will revisit in the future. And then we got on to the two library books. Um, 
and I got these mixed up. So I read the last, what's currently the last book in the series first. Uh, so I read book 15 of the Guild Hunter series by uh, names. I'm doing really well with words and names recently. I'm forgetting them all. Uh, Nalini Singh, that's her name. Um, so this is book 15. It's Angel's Resurrection. And we are, this book is set 10 years on from the end of the war the, um, <clears throat> that is been taking, building up in the previous um previous thir the first 13 books in the series and uh, this is following on the their romance novels um angels mortals vampires strange beings that no one really knows what they are um and they're just a good fun ride uh this is just again furthering um the story it's tying up a loose end that was left um from maybe book 12 I think in the series ties up a loose end can't really talk very much about it um, because it would spoil anything that came before um, and yeah I enjoyed it they are fun fast reads um, I've enjoyed all the books in the series they've all been three and a half to four stars um, so yes so like I say uh, this was book 15 um, but it was the 14th book that I'd read and it's now back with the library and they can stop um, chasing me for it. The next book that I finished, um, the eighth book, no, the seventh book. Yes, the seventh book that I finished was the um, book club pick for Cozy Book Co for the month of September. And that book was Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, and yeah, this book surprised me. Um, this book actually surprised me because I thought it was going to be far more about the misogyny in the 50s and 60s as women were starting to um, break out of the box uh, that we've been put in. Um, this is primarily about Elizabeth Zott. Uh, she is um, in the world of science. Uh, she's a chemist and she's trying to make her mark in the world of chemistry um, only she uh, faces some misogyny and ultimately she ends up leaving and taking up um, the role of tv chef on a new tv program only she decides that she is going to build chemistry into the um, recipes that she teaches because she's actually a very good cook which is why um, she's perfect for the role and it's but it's not so much about that it's about the events that are happening to her um around that and um her i don't know whether it was a refusal to see the misogyny or whether it was just you know i'm going to plow on regardless because there's no reason why i can't be a chemist um there was some mixed views on the book club um i think we all kind of agree we could all see the flaws in it um i as a first read through for me i really enjoyed it i gave it a fairly high rating um but i could see the flaws in it and it was very swiftly wrapped up um but i overall for me it was a good read it was a good choice um I think the other choice was the colour purple, which I've read previously. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I read it and I'm glad I made the effort to sit down with it and pay attention to it. And I actually remembered quite a bit of it at the point that we were talking about it, which is unusual for me. Because um, even when I finish a book on the same day, I don't really remember very much. Um, but yeah. Um, unfortunately it's being made into a TV series I'm not going to be able to watch it um, because it's on a subscription service and I don't have any access to that service so um, yeah looking forward um, to trying her I'd read her again uh, this was a, her debut novel um, but I would definitely read something from her again um, and yeah read it it has flaws you'll see them don't let that stymie your enjoyment. The next book was the second library book. And this is book 14 of the um, Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh. And it's Archangel's Light. 
This is set between uh, two angels uh, who have been lifelong friends. They are best friends. Um, but uh, one of them had a traumatic event very early in his life and the other one has been very careful to help him with his recovery, be a rock, be his light, be, you know, try to bring him back to who he used to be. Only he's now able to stand on his own two feet and he's told him that uh, it's caused a rift between them. They are on separate sides of the world and they end up coming together um, and being put into a situation where it's just the two of them and they have to confront um, what's been happening and the reason for the rift and they do and it's um, so it's a romance story but it's not because it's about their friendship as much if not more than it is about them realizing that the two of them are in love and have been in love for many years um, it's LGBTQ um, representation um, and I just, I, this is the best book in the series for me. I, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I left this one and read it out of order. Um, because I think this is what I've been, the, the, the feelings as I was reading this, I think this is what I've been really wanting from this series. Just the, the emotion and the passion and the connection. And, a, and because it wasn't just about romance, it was about friendship. And I just think that, um, I loved it and uh, it's the best book in the series for me um, and I, I yeah I think if I hadn't read The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting this would probably be in contention for the best book of year at the moment um, but it, it's coming in second or third um, and I, I have thoroughly enjoyed that and I'm sad that the series, that's it. There's no more books in this series. There's one coming out towards the end of next year. Not sure who that's going to be following. Um, but we'll see. I think that might go back to the original couple. Again, I think it might be one of those. Um, yeah, but I've got to wait. Um, and I don't know if... I don't know if uh, my local libraries have access to her other series that she's written, the Psy Changeling series by Neil Leany Singh. Um, I might have a look and see when they start letting me borrow books again, um, if I can behave and just, you know, take books back on time, maybe they'll let me have them. Um, but we'll see and I'll go from there. Um, so yeah, sad, but again, it's another series that is marked as, I've marked it as finished on my list um, because it's another 12 months before the next book comes out. So uh, to all intents and purposes, for now, it is done. My final book of the month was, again, another series continuation. And that book is Monday Morning by Kathy Rikes. This is the seventh book, I think. Sixth or seventh book in her, no, yeah, seventh book in her Temperance Brennan series. They are murder mystery crime novels. Um, Temp is a forensic anthropologist who um, works for various police forces. This time she's in Quebec, back in Quebec, and she has to find the killer of uh, three sets of bones. And she's struggling to identify the bones in this one. Um, and it's not until three quarters of the way that she has a breakthrough and realizes what's happened. Um, it races through to a finish in the end. You have a little bit of tense action where another character has disappeared and we don't know where they are, but they don't come back into it until the end. Um, there is um, a romance plot um, undergo on underlying the story and we get a little bit of continuation with that. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it, I, I'm enjoying my rereads of these books. Um, and I do, I mean, I've said before, Kathy Rikes, uh, she's the only crime author that I've really stuck with where she's got a big series um, and that I've read book after book after book. Um, and I'm enjoying my rereads. And I'm glad that was my last book of the month. Um, so I'm really pleased with my reading in the month of September. Uh, the fact that I managed to stick to eight out of nine books on a TBR 
is I, a few months ago I wouldn't have even dreamed, I wasn't dreaming of making TBRs and I wasn't sticking to them even if I did. So to have stuck to eight books out of nine on a TBR I'm really pleased with and really happy about and yeah I hope that continues on. Uh, so what did you read in September? Have you discovered your best book of the year yet? If you have let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to chatting with you there and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!